All right, welcome back. Uh, got us a nice coyote here this morning out in the edge of this cornfield. Um, MB450 had a dirt hole set in here. We actually made a double uh, right on the other side of the road. We had tracks on that one, just didn't catch. Could have been the same coyote, could have been a different one. So anyway, on this video, um, <clears throat> I really just want to focus on kind of, I just want to lump everything into one. I've done videos on, you know, my trap preferences, my bait preferences, um, locations, things like that. And I just kind of want to mash all that into one on this video. Just give a good coyote trapping 101 here. So um, anyway, as we move on through the trap line over the next week or so, I'll just really focus in on the sets that I make, the baits that I use, the locations that I choose and why. And hope you guys enjoy it, man. All right, so we just picked up another coyote. <clears throat> 50, 75 feet from where we had that first one. We're still in this big field. Um, we got a little bit of everything out here too, man. There's sunflowers, corn, and peanuts. And I've really been targeting this field the last couple of years because of the peanuts. It's just free protein that these animals are out here eating. It's like laying ribeye steaks on top of the ground. It's just something they don't really have to work for. They can still gain a bunch of protein out of it on top of all of the other animals that are out here eating the peanuts and the sunflower seeds and the corn and so on and so forth. So anyway, I'm going to get this thing handled, get him taken out of here, and I'm going to show you guys exactly why I picked this particular location of this field. All right, so as you can see, this is a, this is a pretty big field. I'd say it's 20 acres, 15 to 20 acres, and planted primarily for dove, but there's tons of other animals out here. The reason that I chose this spot, and there are coyote tracks everywhere, the reason I chose this spot is actually because of this washout right here. And there are tracks. You can see the coyote tracks up and down this wash. The reason these coyotes like to travel these, these, these washouts, number one, it gives them a little lower elevation to walk through. They can't be seen quite as easy. And second, a lot of times there's no trash in these washes. It's just dirt. And it's nice, smooth, clean, soft dirt that these animals can walk through quietly and this wash goes i'd say 50 or 60 yards up into this field before it kind of bottoms out <clears throat> so that's just that much further that these animals can get into this field to perhaps get to a deer or a rabbit or birds or whatever they're out here hunting so anyway picking that location or picking this location this is exactly why i set it and set it the way i did and i actually put a trap I actually put another trap. I doubled this set as well. I put another trap down in the wash there, the dirt hole set, and kind of just made it like a walkthrough slash dirt hole. Um, had a ton of tracks up and down this wash, and we had some other tracks over here. So that is why we picked it, and it has paid off. Okay, so in remaking this set, I'm just gonna move it just a little bit. Coyote made a pretty big mess of it over there. So rather than trying to rake all that stuff out, we're just gonna move it <clears throat> just a foot or two from where we caught. And our other double, or the other half of our doubles right over here, eight or 10 feet away. Still in a little bit of a wash here and there's tracks up and down it. So we're just gonna, we're gonna use the same trap, just rub some dirt on it, clean it up a little bit. And I'm going with a double dirt hole set here. And the reason I'm doing that <clears throat> is I got a single dirt hole right over here. So I don't want to use the same thing, you know, that close to, to another. So I just want to mix it up a little bit. So I drilled in a dirt hole here and then one slightly offset back here. I'll put a bait in this one and a lure in this one. Okay, so what we got here, we got a Bridger 175, a uh, four coil. I four coiled all my 175s, like I've said before. We're just gonna put this trap in, but instead of placing it towards the dirt hole like this, because these animals are walking this uh, walking this wash this way, I'm gonna face my trap here. Even though I'm looking for them to stop and, and work that dirt hole, I'm still gonna face the, the, the dead spot of the trap. I'm actually gonna give it about a 45 on this wash instead of straight at the dirt hole like you typically do. Pack that sucker in good. Always bed your traps good. I got a good video on trap bedding. You guys can check it out. I'll put the link up here for it.
And then all this, it's not bad in some situations to leave, you know, a little mound of dirt or a ring of dirt or whatever from where you made your set. But in this situation, I want it, I want it to all just kind of look uniform. I'll put a few of those little clumps here and there for a foot guide, but I'm not gonna overdo it on this set because these coyotes are already naturally walking through here. I'm not necessarily trying to draw them to somewhere that they're not already going. So I just wanna keep it, keep it simple, stupid. A couple little dirt clods, maybe one behind the hole, one here for somewhat of a foot guide, and that's it. Bait, lure, probably not even gonna put any urine on this one because this coyote's been in his trap uh, last night. I mean, he's got the place smelled up good, so that's it. All right, so here we go. This is the second coyote out of this set. <clears throat> this is the trap that we caught one in the other day, and I just showed you the remake of it with a double dirt hole. Got him here in a Bridger 175 on this little washout in the backside of this field. Um, good full pad catch. Third coyote out of this field in about three or four nights, so uh, we're doing pretty good on him. But anyway, good on that remake. Uh, glad you guys got to see the remake and then see a catch in it, so that works out pretty good. But anyway, we're going to get him handled, uh, get this trap remade, Keep moving. All right, uh, second coyote today is a different piece of property. Um, right down the edge of this road here in the, this ditch, a uh, little ditch wash, had a bunch of tracks in this soft sand. So we put in a double dirt hole up in this bank. Got him on the second night. So anyway, we're gonna grab some pictures of him and keep moving on. All right, so we just. <laughs> Just pulled up here, got us a nice little bobcat in this trap. Uh, this is actually only about the third or fourth cat that we've caught off this property in a couple of years. Uh, the place has just got tons and tons of raccoons, but we've been trapping it pretty hard for a few years now and got the raccoon numbers down to manageable. And we picked up a coyote this morning and now got us a bobcat. Uh, this is the first night set. The coyote was in the second night set. So it's turning out pretty good. We got a good little cold snap coming through. Um, it's got some critters moving. So anyway, I'm gonna grab up some pictures, get this set remade. Get this cat out of here. All right, so we just picked up another one here. Uh, got him by the back foot with a MB450. Show you how good those little traps hold these big coyotes. Got two toes in there and uh, he's he's held tough. Anyway, it looks like a really, really big male right on the edge of a clear cut here at this intersection. And uh, I'm gonna get him took out of here and keep rolling. Uh, keep rolling. All right, this is uh, turning out to be a bumper crop day out here at this place. Just pulled up, got our second bobcat right here. You look way over there. Where is he? He ain't flopping out there. That's the third coyote. So we got two cats, three coyotes here, and got another coyote off another place. So four coyotes and two cats last night. I think we still got one or two traps left to check. I don't want to jinx myself, but probably didn't catch anything in those. But anyway, got this cat here, had a double dirt hole set in, I think, right here. And I'll go show you the coyote in just a minute. And there's our coyote. All right, so this makes our fourth coyote uh for tonight it's kind of a younger dog but we had it here on the corner of this uh plowed up field saw some tracks in here yesterday we were setting traps yesterday and we just set on sign everywhere we saw a coyote track we put a trap um and it's paid off pretty daggum good so anyway had a dirt hole set in here and snagged up this coyote so i don't know what else to say pretty good night pretty excited about it got him in a bridger 175 with a good deep pad catch on him and we're going to get him out of here, get him handled, and keep moving. All right, here we go. This is uh, day four on this property. Uh, this will be the second coyote out of this trap. Uh, looks like a pretty good-sized female. Uh, just had a dirt hole set in here along the uh, along this little dirt berm here in this ditch. They're, like I said before, they're walking these little, uh, these little soft sand washes. Uh, it's just quiet walking for them. And... Uh, we're whacking them in here, man. This is number four out of this place. So we're going to grab up some pictures of her, get this set remade, and keep moving. So I get a lot of questions about what's the best set, what's the best set to make for a coyote or bobcat or whatever. 
So what we got here, we caught a raccoon in this set last night. We had a dirt hole in just a few feet over here. Raccoon made a big mess of it like they normally do. So we're just going to move it over a few feet. I'm going to show you guys start to finish the most basic, simple set you can make is a dirt hole set. And it's honestly probably what I catch 70% of my coyotes and bobcats and things like that on. So start to finish, here's the, the basic single dirt hole set. So what we got here, we got a couple little tufts of grass. We're right on the corner of a field. Um, there's a road right here along the edge of the field. There's a, a mowed row of corn here behind us with some standing corn. So it's just a good, it, it's a good travel path for all kinds of animals to come through. Uh, we got some heavily wooded area right here to the other side of the road. So it's a good little choke point, good little, good little funnel for all these animals to be you know, traveling this field and all. So I got this one little tuft of grass. It's about six or eight inches high. I really don't like a big, brushy, huge backing for my dirt hole sets. So I'm gonna punch a hole right here at the base of this little tuft of grass. And if you notice, I use a three inch auger. I like that bigger hole. You can get the two inch, it's a little bit smaller, but I prefer the three inch. It just has more flair, more pop to it when an animal comes walking by and, and has that first visual of the set. Looks a little bit bigger. Looks like something bigger, like a coyote may have dug at it um, to try to get the, the bait or whatever out of this hole. So I got the hole drilled in. You can see it's about a 45 degree angle and I've drilled it in nice and smooth, but what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just at the outside edge of it, the top edge, I'm gonna kind of wallow it out a little bit, make it a little bit bigger than that three inch perfect circle that the auger leaves. And I run it about that deep. That's a good 12, 13 inch deep hole. You don't want a shallow hole that an animal could just walk up to and reach in and grab the bait in one scoop and be gone. You want him to try to work for it. So we got this hole wallowed out nice and big. And um, I, I like to kind of just push a little bit of the dirt back from it. It kind of weatherproofs the set a little bit. You know, if you get rain, wind, whatever, it doesn't blow dirt or wash dirt back down into the set, into the hole quite as easy. So we got uh, the same trap we caught the raccoon in last night. It's an MB450. This is my rig. It's about 14 inches of chain with two swivels. Um, and that, that's, that's what I like to run. I like to run a short chain. Um, I don't run shock springs. I used to, um, I don't anymore, but this does less foot damage than the shock spring and a long chain where an animal can snatch and pull on it. If he's only got six inches of chain that he can pull on, that's all, you know, that's all the fight he can give. So I've found that these shorter chains with just a few swivels in them, uh, do a lot less damage to the animal than, the uh, the big long chains with the shock springs. So we're gonna take our hammer, <clears throat> we're gonna come back off center about nine to 10 inches and offset about two to three. That's where I want the center of my pan is ultimately gonna wind up right about here. And dig that trap bed nice and deep. <clears throat> okay, so that's, you know, four to five inches deep that I got my bed there. <clears throat> Anchor it right in the center of the of the, uh, <clears throat> of the trap bed. <clears throat> and give it a little tug to make sure that anchor's good and set. This is just polyfill out of a, a dollar store pillow. I get a couple of them every year, cut them open, let them air out for a few days before I start using them. <clears throat> Goes right under the pan, keeps your dirt, rocks, whatever out from under it. That trap's night latch now. Little bit of soft dirt down in the bottom. Give that trap something to squish down into. Give a couple nice good twists in there. And it's already good and bedded uh, 
pretty solid as is. So <clears throat> I like to take my hammer and just kind of slope around the bed of the trap. I don't like any sharp, steep edges around the edge of my bed. It just doesn't look natural. Um, so I take that, take that hammer and give it a nice little slope and then just go and pack that dirt all around the outsides of the jaws. Keep your pan clear where you can see your pan, know where your pan is all the time. <clears throat> Once I get it packed around the outside, give it a little sprinkle of dirt, clear that pan again, and then I pack in the inside of the jaws. Nice, tight, solid bed. That's the most important thing about trapping and, and successfully trapping coyotes is a good bedded trap. So once I've got it packed in good, smooth and level, take my dirt, give it a final little dusting and I always blend the entire set in. I blend in a foot or two around it so that it's not just one big dark spot of dirt where the trap set. And the little leftovers, the little clumps of dirt, and little rocks and things like that, that that didn't make it through the sifter, I'll use those as foot guides in different places. I usually will put one up towards the front of the trap. Like I've already made a little pile of them right here and then just take one or two and just kind of, just gently place it around Just gently place those uh, little rocks, little stones, pebbles, whatever around to, to give that coyote something that he won't step on. It kind of guides his feet in towards the trap. So we got our dirt hole, trap set, a couple foot guides, a little pile of dirt here. And right under that pile of dirt, most times, I'll punch my lure hole. <clears throat> I give it about that same 45 degree angle you know, three or four inches deep. And I had a conversation with a guy yesterday who wanted to know about lures, what kind of lures I use, um, how many do I use on a set. I have six lures in my bag. I use Dobbins Digger, um, Tom Miranda's Catman Do. I use Fox Hollow, Bounty Hunter, Violator 7, and Voodoo, and High Plains Predator Call. I think that's a Milligan's bait. Um, and that's it. Actually, I'm sorry. So Catman Do is a Milligan's bait. High Plains Predator is a Tom Miranda bait. Had those two mixed up. So on this set, I'm going to use two lures, a bait, and urine. So I'm going to take this Catman Do here. I'm going to get a little scoop of it, and I'm going to stick it down in that lure hole, nice and deep, all the way to the bottom. I'm also gonna use a surface lure here, which is gonna be Fox Hollow Bounty Hunter. So I'm gonna take this surface lure, and I've got another little tuft of grass right over here to the side. Now that's a good two feet, you know, 18 to 24 inches away from my trap. But with my surface lures, I like to kind of put those off to the side in case a coyote decides to come up and roll in the set. Coyotes roll on stinking stuff just like your dog would if he found something in the yard. So I tend to put that surface lure a little bit away. If the coyote does decide to roll in it, at least he's away from the trap set. But he'll still work around it, smelling and scratching and digging and different things like that. So last but not least is our bait. Got one little scoop left in here. This is just a fresh meat bait that I make. Um, it's you know, a blend of mice, bobcat, uh, different things like that. So that bait's all the way down deep into that hole. And always move your setting gear out of the way. You don't want to get any urine on that setting gear. So here I got a little bit of coyote urine. I like the little squeeze bottles. The spray bottles always break on me. I'll put just a couple little drips right there on that back end. And then I'll shoot a little line of it, you know, towards the field and towards the road. 
That way, if a coyote is walking down the road or he's walking down the field edge and he's not coming right across, directly across the set, say the wind is blowing from the road into the field. Well, if a coyote is walking down the road and the wind's blowing away from the set, he might not be able to smell it. So I like to take and just shoot a little line out towards the road that gives him a good scent trail if he comes across that and do the same thing behind me. That way, no matter which way the wind's blowing, if that coyote travels the road or the field edge, he's got to walk across a scent trail that's going to guide him into this trap. So that's it. That is your basic dirt hole set. That set has been used for forever. Um, you can modify it a little bit. You can change the location of the dirt hole. You can change the location of the lure hole, your foot guides, your different lures, baits, urine, things like that. You can use bobcat urine whatever but that is the most simple set that you can make for a coyote or for any animal for that fact that will produce numbers all right got us a bobcat this morning uh mb450 like a pretty good uh front foot catch there nice good pad catch on him um pretty good sized cat this trap's been in for a long time probably a month and uh we've only caught a raccoon in it <clears throat> but got a call from the property manager this morning that we had this bobcat in here so we made it over here as quick as we could and we're gonna go ahead and get him out of here and get this trap remade <laughs> got a got a barker this trap's been in about two weeks now hadn't had anything in it i'm going around freshening them up this morning nailed me a big dog just when you think your bait and lure has worn off these animals can still smell it. I'm going to grab up some pictures, get it remade. All right, so let's pause for a minute. I want to talk about uh, baiting your traps, rebaiting your traps uh, mostly. All right, so it's been super dry around here. Um, we've only had about three or four inches of rain in the last month and a half or two months. So when it's dry like that, I like to freshen my traps up at least with some urine every five to seven days. I don't always put fresh lure and I don't always put fresh bait in them, <clears throat> but we're going around today. Uh, I did that about a week ago, I, about eight days ago. I went and I rebaited everything because we had had some rain, washed a bunch of sets out. So I went through, put a scoop of fresh bait and everything. Where I'm at down here in South Carolina, we got fire ants real bad. I know a bunch of you guys do. And some of you don't know what a fire ant is. And good for you. Um, but we just pulled up this trap here. And I'm like I say, I'm going to throw some fresh bait in it. I'm going to show you what I deal with and, and why I rebate when I do. So you can see the daggum trail of ants. And there's a trap set here. You can see the trail of ants going down into the dirt hole. I don't know how well you can see it, but it's pretty well caved in <clears throat> and that's a that's a direct result of the ants getting in there and they're basically trying to build an ant bed inside my dirt hole and not saying that a critter won't go to it or that a critter can't smell it i just think they have to get a lot closer to it for that attractant to draw them in so we're going to take the auger run this hole out clean throw a fresh scoop of bait in it fresh lure on the <clears throat> on the little stump here and keep keep on moving and keep on rebating traps all right so i know i told you guys i was going to be a little more uh, interactive on this video rather than just showing catches i was going to show you some sets and different things like that a couple things i'm real big on with my locations is my historical catches uh so if i've trapped a place for a few years and i've caught coyotes in a single spot or bobcats or whatever in a, in a, in a repetitive spot I'm going to set that spot back every year, usually within eight to 10 feet of where I had it the year before. Um, and having said that, that, that's one thing I'm really big on is my historical catch sites. One thing I'm not big on, especially when it comes to making coyote sets, is the old V sticks uh, in the ground, the way everybody trapped when we were kids. That's how I trapped. Caught a lot of raccoon, caught a lot of fox that way when I was a kid. But to me, it's not very characteristic of a coyote to go towards a set like that. It may work for you wherever you are, but I know for me, I've not had a, a, a good run of luck uh, trying to catch coyotes like that. However, what I've got here is a natural deadfall log right down this little plowed lane on the edge of this road. And I have caught coyotes here and I have caught bobcats here. 
So I'm gonna take advantage of the natural log that I've got here as kind of a back end. And I've drilled this hole into this bank at an angle, kind of going under the log, into the bank a little bit. <clears throat> and I'm gonna use that, I'm gonna use what's naturally here. If you can naturally find like that trap I showed you earlier, with the little stump for the backing and things like that. I don't think there's anything wrong with, with something like that, but to take two or three sticks and actually, you know, block your trap up with it, I think it just looks too unnatural for a coyote. Not saying you can't catch one like that. I'm just saying I don't. So anyway, I already got my trap uh, driven in the ground here. I got an MB450, which by the way, a little plug for uh, Tim Caven and Minnesota Trap Line Products. This is the best trap on the market. Um, it, it has very, very, very minimal foot damage, if any at all, to these animals. It's got a good hold on it. I use the closed jaws, I don't use offsets. It's got a good hold on it, but you can stick your hand in there and fire the trap on your fingers, and it, it's like sticking your hand in a mouse trap. But it holds big, big coyotes. I'd say 90% of the coyotes I catch are in MB450s. So if you guys are looking for a good trap, that's a decent price. It's made in the United States. It's got super heavy springs on it. <clears throat> it's got really a, a good, thick, wide jaw for a good, solid catch where the, the Bridgers 175s that I used to use, they have a real narrow jaw and they have a tendency to cut a foot. I'm getting away from those. I've gotten away from those almost completely, uh, except for a lot of the old ones that I have. But this is the trap that I recommend for coyote, bobcat, fox, raccoons. Aside from a wolf, I don't think there's anything in North America that you can trap that this MB450 will not hold. All right, here we go. Uh, just picked up another coyote off this property. Um, I think this is number five off here this week. Um, kind of a funny story with this coyote. <clears throat> well, funny story with this trap anyway uh set this trap here it's under a big live oak so there's lots of acorns and stuff dropping there's raccoons and deer and all kind of stuff feeding around under here <clears throat> the first night i had this trap set a deer stepped in it popped it and when i came pulling up the next morning to check it the trap was popped laying up out of the trap bed and there was a coyote sitting right there on the edge of the road just staring at my trap and i was like golly man can't believe it like he might would have got caught that first night, but uh, if the deer hadn't stepped in it, but he got caught regardless. Um, we really been whacking them this week, man. I think this makes like, I don't know, 10 or 12 or 15 or somewhere in there that I've caught this week. It's just been an awesome week. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and wrap the video up with this one. We're going to grab up some pictures of him. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks for all the support, and we'll catch you on the next one.